It's been nearly 80 years since the end of the Second World War, but there's still plenty of fascination about the presence of German U-boats along the Atlantic coastline, including here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, today, we're going to probe the depths of Conception Bay, where the Battle of the Atlantic brought death and destruction in 1942. It's an unusually calm fall day on the Avalon Peninsula, so Neil Burgess and Isabel Hubert are taking advantage of the conditions to pursue one of their passions. The name on the side of this small aluminum boat gives it away. This married couple loves to explore shipwrecks. Today, they're heading to a location that attracts divers from around the world, the wreckage of four merchant ships, all loaded down with iron ore, torpedoed and sunk by German U-boats. These are sonar images of the Saganaga, Lord Strathcona, Rose Castle and the PLM-27, all resting below the waves at depths between 15 and 50 meters just off Lance Cove, Belle Island. These wrecks are just four of the ships destroyed by U-boats off the coast of Newfoundland and this map plots a deadly chain of events. These waters were hunting grounds for the German Navy and 1942 was especially deadly. Ship after ship sent to the bottom a sense of dread spreading among Allied sailors as they tried to evade these prowling predators of the deep. Just off on the Grand Banks, U-boats sank dozens and dozens and dozens of cargo ships because all the convoys going from North America to Britain used to pass by Cape Race on the way. And the Germans weren't dummies. They knew to sit right where all the traffic was going to be. And so the U-boats regularly came to the Grand Banks and were actively hunting in wolf packs. There was outrage after the passenger steamship Caribou, sailing between Porto Basque and North Sydney, was sunk in October of 42. 136 of the 237 on board, including women and children, were lost to a torpedo fired by U-69. But the best known and most accessible wrecks are here in the shallow waters of Conception Bay close to shore and well-preserved. Divers like Neil and Isabel explore these wrecks with respect. I remember the moment for me that really struck me, I was diving on the PLM and I came across a shoe. And I couldn't help but think, was somebody wearing this when the ship sank? And thinking about the poor guy who was terrorized by this torpedo blowing his ship up and trying to get off with his skin. Um, that really changed my attitude. So they enter the water with the full knowledge that they are visiting a war grave. The bodies of many of those who died here were never recovered. So Neil and Isabel are about to dive on the wreck of the PLM-27 and we're going to join them. Though we're not going to get wet. And it doesn't take long before the ocean comes alive. An explosion of marine life. A garden of sea anemones, urchins, and various species of fish. But also the unmistakable outline of rusting steel. The drone approaches a hatch. Where does it lead? Who were the sailors that accessed this opening? This is a story about death. But from disaster, new life has emerged an artificial reef. Steel once forged and shaped by man, built to carry vast quantities of ore over the ocean, now a subsurface resort teeming with life. This is a story about war and how it affected Newfoundland and Labrador. And in the case of the Conception Bay shipwrecks, it's also a tale of irony, how the outbreak of the Second World War changed a business relationship Germany was one of the largest customers of iron ore from Belle Island. The last shipment to Germany left Conception Bay just days before the outbreak of hostilities in 1939. 
So the Nazis were well aware of Bell Island's strategic value to the Allies, since iron ore is a critical ingredient in the production of steel. Orders came down from the very top, halt the supply of Bell Island iron ore to steel mills in Canada and Britain. That strategy was executed with devastating effect by Hitler's deadliest weapon in the Atlantic, marauding U-boats. There's many myths about U-boats along North America's Atlantic coasts. For example, there's the legend of German crews going ashore in Quebec and buying provisions from sympathetic shopkeepers. Most of these myths have been proven to be the product of an overactive imagination. But the wrecks beneath us here today, there's nothing fake about what happened here. The ships laying at the bottom of Conception Bay were destroyed during two attacks in the fall of 1942. This act of war was not limited to the sinking of four ships and the loss of thousands of tons of valuable iron ore. There was also a heavy human toll. 65 sailors died in these attacks. The people who lived along this shore had a front row seat to the horrors of war. What they witnessed and their heroic response is still talked about by their descendants. So it was the Reeses, the Beckfords, the Hammonds, the Bennets, the Kents, the Kennedys, all of the people in the Lance Cove area came to the beach when all of this was happening to save the sailors. A lot of them couldn't swim. Today, this woman runs the Bell Island Museum. 82 years ago, her father David Kennedy was among those who risked their own lives to save panicked sailors and recover the dead. And her mother Alice Kennedy never forgot what she heard and saw. She said, Teresita, all I could hear was screaming and shouting and help me and save me. I'm drowning. Help me. Help me. And she said, when the Saganaga went down, she came up like that and went right down into the water like that. And she said all that they could hear was the screaming. The story of these sinkings are detailed at this museum. There's artifacts from the lost ore carriers, including this piano, which was removed from the PLM 27 the day before it was sunk. And there's this, a collection of documents, including some signed by Adolf Hitler. Commendations belonging to Rolf Rugeberg. He commanded the U-boat that torpedoed the Saganega and Strathcona. All this was donated by Rugeberg's daughter. We're not congratulating, nor are we condemning. We are preserving the story of what happened in 1942 in the waters of Conception Bay. Not far beneath the surface, a massive anchor hangs from the bow of the PLM-27, a German torpedo, its battery pack fully exposed, but the warhead is missing. The slow deterioration of the wrecks is also revealing more treasures, in this case, a dinner plate. And here's the Marconi room on the Rose Castle. You can still read the gauges. Chris Power spends a lot of time underwater, photographing the Bell Island wrecks. He spends so much time on these underwater graves, he sometimes surfaces with a sense of reverence. There's no monuments built on top of them. They haven't been cleaned up. The only thing that has touched them is time. And I think that's, that's what really hits me. When you're on these, you, you have a sense of humbleness because this is where somebody served. These are people who uh, dedicated their lives to the betterment of others. In 1942, the Germans were winning the Battle of the Atlantic. Over six million tons of Allied shipping sunk that year, including these wrecks in Conception Bay. Decades later, they're a graphic reminder of the consequences of war, a silent tomb to the sailors who lost their lives.